as of late, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about DistroBox. Simply put, it is a simple way of running a containerized Linux distro on top of your existing distro. Think of it like a Linux subsystem for Linux. And no, I am not talking about running a virtual machine. So let's say I am a Ubuntu user, for example, and there is some package I want to install from the AUR, or maybe I want a newer version of a package, or maybe I want something from Fedora or Gen2 or any other distro out there. Sure, I could go and manually compile it. I could even go and make a Debian package for it and have it integrate into apt. Or I can go and install it inside of a virtual machine. Both of these are kind of annoying because, you know, the virtual machine doesn't integrate into your system and the other solution is very manual. While the containerized distro you run in DistroBox integrates tightly into the host system. So any installed applications inside of DistroBox will run like they're on the host system. You can even run GUI applications. What makes this even more compelling is let's say you're using an immutable Linux distro like Silverblue, KinoA, uh, SteamOS, or anything else out there. Well, you can actually install DistroBox on those systems, and then without disturbing the image, and without breaking everything every single update, have full access to every single package and every package manager out there. So the way DistroBox works is very straightforward. Every single command comes in two separate forms. You can either run it with the dash form like this. So you have distrobox, dash create, distrobox, dash enter, distrobox, dash init, or anything after the dash is going to be a option you can include. So I'm going to do something like distrobox list, distrobox create, things like this. I'm generally going to be working in this form, but either is going to work. As you can see, I'd already made some containers, but for the rest of the video, I'm going to call them boxes. So if you want to go and create your own box, what you do is run distro box create, and I'd recommend passing in dash n to set the name. This isn't the name of the distro, this is the name that it's going to show up for you. So this is so you can like keep track of what each of the boxes are being used for. I'm going to call this one video box and then pass in dash i to set the image you want to be using. So I'll leave a link to all of the supported distros down below. You can use pretty much anything you would care to use. Anything from, you know, Amazon Linux to Arch Linux to Clear Linux to Gen2 is in this list somewhere or Void Linux, basically anything you want to use. I'm going to keep it simple though, and let's go with, let's say Ubuntu 20.04. So this name over here is the name we want to be using. You don't need to worry about the rest of this, just this name right at the end. So if we go and do Ubuntu colon 20.04, run that, it's going to create the box. Now, usually it doesn't run that quickly. I think I created a box previously using that same image. But anyway, if we go and run distro box list, that's going to list out all of the boxes created. But we're not actually inside any of the boxes yet. If we go and run distro box enter, and then the name of the box I want to go into. So in this case, it is going to be video box. The first time you do this, it is going to take quite a while to do everything. It's going to have to like, you know, do the initial initialization of the distro, installing basic packages, setting up all of the stuff that, you know, distros have to set up. So I'll cut back to when that's done. And there we go. First thing you're going to notice is I'm getting a bunch of errors here. And it's stuff in my ZSHRC. But I just created the distro. Why does it have a ZSHRC? Well, if we go and run ls, you're going to notice that it's my regular home directory. When I said this was integrated into your host system, I wasn't lying. This has full access to your regular system, and if you do stupid things inside the box, like rm-rf, you will break your system. Treat this box as if it is your regular distro. But how can I prove to you that this is actually a new distro? Well, let's install a package in the Ubuntu way. sudo apt-get, and let's say I want to install NeoFetch, for example. Now, 
there's going to be a bunch of things in here to download because, you know, it's downloading that basic image, but it's not going to be the most up-to-date version of the distro. So I'll cut back to when this is done, and then we can run NeoFetch. Now, when I said this basically had full access to your host system, I didn't mean that installing packages and things like that are going to break your host. So anything that's happening outside of your home directory, like installing packages, for example, is going to be kept inside of the box. Now, let's run NeoFetch and see what happens. It's Ubuntu. But it's not Ubuntu the way you would normally expect it. There are weird things going on. Firstly, it knows my window manager is BSPWM, even though in Ubuntu, there's no Xorg server running. Also, my kernel is my Arch kernel, but it's clearly reporting that my OS is Ubuntu. Also, my host name is this weird video box.arch, and my terminal is this containered shim. But all in all, it's still Ubuntu, just weird Ubuntu. But running NeoFetch is kind of boring. We don't need to run NeoFetch. We want to run GUI applications. This right here is my host system, my regular Arch system. And on this system, I do not have Kate installed. But inside of my distro box, I have just installed Kate. If I run it, it's going to work. We can run GUI applications from another distro inside of my distro. And here's the really fun part. We don't have to be entered into the box to use it. So one thing we can do is distro box dash export and then dash dash app and the app that I want to export in this case being Kate. What this is going to do is create a desktop entry on my host system so I can use it in any sort of GUI application launcher. I don't use a GUI app launcher though, so that doesn't really matter to me. What matters way more to me is exporting the binary directly. So once again, what I'm going to do is distro box export. You can use either form. I've just got this one written down. And then dash dash bin, the path to the binary you want to be exporting. In this case, it is slash user slash bin slash Kate. Let's not go through all of those options slash Kate. And then what we're going to do is dash dash export dash path. And then where on the host system you want to actually install the binary to. I'm going to go in my dot local directory and then in the bin directory. So let's see if we can go and find it on the host system. So inside of that folder, there is now a Kate file there. It's not a binary. It's basically just a launch script. But I didn't notice this before. Um, it's actually broken. So if we run it, it's going to say that it can't find a container with the name slash user slash bin slash Kate. That's not supposed to be the container name. That's supposed to be the name of the binary. What it's trying to do, I'll actually show you because this is another command I want to go over. Distro box, enter, and then dash n. The name of the box will go with video box, dash dash, and then whatever application I want to open. In this case, let's say, once again, slash user, slash bin, slash Kate. And that is going to work. I'm not sure why the exports aren't functioning on my install, but I can't fix that right now, so let's just move on. Let's go and leave the box. We can just do so by doing an exit. And then let's say I want to go and start messing around with one of the boxes, but I don't know if I'm going to break it. What we can do is actually clone the box. So distro box create and then dash C, the name of the thing you want to clone. In this case, we're going to clone video box and then dash n, the new name you want to go with. I'm going to call it video box 2 and it's not going to work. So whenever you want to do any operations on your distro boxes, they need to be stopped first. If you want to stop a box, distro box, stop, and the name of the box you want to stop. Video box, yes, I want to stop it. Now, once you've stopped it, Anything where it involves entering the box, like running the application, is going to have to go through all of that startup time, but you have to do it to do anything like this. So let's go back and run the same command, and it's going to duplicate the box, and once that's duplicated, we're going to go and delete the previous one. So, distro box, and then rm video box. Yes, we want to delete it. I love that it has confirmation prompts for everything you're doing. If we now do distro box list, that previous box is gone, but we now have the new one. Also, the image doesn't say Ubuntu anymore. Instead, it is an image of that previous box. 
Now, there is a lot more that DistroBox can do. Whether it's doing things like upgrading every single one of your boxes at the exact same time, you know, running the internal package managers without having to go inside the boxes. Whether it's doing something weird like creating a ephemeral box. Basically, a, uh, a box that only runs once and then automatically deletes itself. So you could have something like Ubuntu 22.04 and then it will run the command, I don't know, some command that's pre-installed in Ubuntu. I'm really not sure what the point of Ephemeral is, but there are all of these weird things you can do. And the documentation for DistroBox is very, very verbose. Pretty much anything you want to know about the application not only is explained, but they do the BSD thing, and I really wish more projects would do this, include examples of how to use it. So if you're not sure about why you might want to use certain options, this will tell you why. Along with including a fairly substantial list of ways that you can actually use DistroBox. For example, let's say you want to have Japanese input editors working on clear Linux, which normally wouldn't be possible. This is something you can do. What if you wanted to do something like, I don't know, what else is here? DistroBox running a window manager and desktop environments from inside of DistroBox. Also something you can do. Things that wouldn't seem immediately apparent, but are really useful. Now say it with me, because I need to reiterate. DistroBox is not a VM replacement. It is not doing sandboxing. It is not doing isolation. It is integrated into your host. Please be very careful. I know it can seem tempting that you're inside of this box, run something dangerous. Don't do that. Bad idea. Unless you want to break your host system, stop it. Calm down. There is some work being done to make sandboxing happen. So that is a idea that is being considered, but it is not something done out of the box. Now, in the back end, DistroBox is using either Docker or Podman. You can choose which one you want to be using. In my case, I am using Docker. And the way the DistroBox has it configured is even less sandboxed than those solutions would be out of the box. Now, when you install DistroBox, at least doing so through the AUR, it doesn't actually set up either. So DistroBox will not function. I'll show you how to set up Docker and leave a link to the Arch Wiki down below for Podman. First thing you need to do is install the Docker package, which in the vast majority of cases is just going to be packaged as Docker. Once that's installed, you're going to need to go and add your user into the Docker group. So user mod a g and then the group Docker on your user. Now you should re-log into your user to make sure that group is you know, being applied to the user and then the last thing you need to do is systemctl start or enable, whichever one you want to be using. If you want to have it always running, use enable docker.service. And that is going to make sure that Docker is running in the background. Another common problem you might see is you set up your distro box, you install a GUI application, and you run it, and it doesn't work. It says something like there's no X server installed, it can't find an X server, and the application just isn't working. But clearly, the fact that you have a GUI there indicates your X server, you know, is running. Or if you're on Wayland, your X Wayland server is running. Basically, what's happening here is your distro box hasn't been granted access to the X server. The way we deal with this is by setting up X host. So on Arch Linux, this is in a package called Xorg X host. But it might just be X host, check with your specific distro. And then once that is done, what you need to do is run this command, xhost plus si colon local user colon and then the user variable. What this is going to do is grant every local user on your system access to your X server. This is not something you want to see happen on a multi-user system, but on a personal system like this isn't that big of a deal. And now when you go back into your distro box, it is going to work. If you want to get rid of these extra permissions, what you do is xhost minus. Never, ever, ever do xhost plus. If you do that, you're going to make your X server not work properly, as in you won't see anything, because you get rid of your permission to see it. 
Now, as you can probably tell, and as I've mentioned, I am using Arch Linux. So for me, I don't find I generally have that much of a reason to use DistroBox. But if you're on Ubuntu, if you're on Debian, if you're on Silverblue, if you're on SteamOS, if you're on, you know, regular Fedora, or any other distro where it might be difficult to get the package that you need, or in some cases, get an updated version of that package, DistroBox is an incredible tool to go with. From my brief amount of testing with GUI applications, there's not really a performance hit. There is a performance hit when loading the application, but because it integrates into your host system, it's not slower from what I've seen. And a tool like this would make it viable for me to actually run another distro with this channel. Maybe I'll try out, you know, Silverblue. Probably not going to, but I could do it. I could run another distro and then still get everything I wanted from the AUR and I'd be good. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you run DistroBox? If so, let me know what you use it for. If you've never heard of DistroBox, are you going to use it now? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, so I'll pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.